So when I was in high school, two of the worst P words in my vocabulary were parallel parking. I had a little problem with tossing a car into reverse and giving the wheel a spin to pull perfectly into the parking spot without hearing the scrape of the wheel hub against the curb, which let's be honest, is like nails on a chalkboard. But decades ago, good young drivers were bred with the advent of driver's ed. The death grip on the steering wheel, the terror of trying to merge into traffic, and all those nerve-wracking rules of the road. Is it just me, or has driver's ed always been super stressful? Before we had formal classes, you'd basically learn at home. It was basically, are you big enough to reach the pedals or the controls? And when once you were, it was up to the parent, and, and off you went. Curator Matt Anderson and I sat down to talk about what driver's ed was like decades before we ever got behind the wheel and how it's evolved. When did driver's ed begin in the U.S.? Well, even in the 1920s, they were talking about traffic safety and regulations and the regular classes, civics classes, that kind of thing. But it's not until the 1930s that we start to see legitimate driver education courses. Starting in the mid to late 90s, they started to move it out of the public schools. Now you have to go to a separate driving instruction school to get your license, which has made it difficult. And why did they do that? Budget concerns in the public schools. I mean, it's expensive to own and operate a fleet of cars. What are the, some of the things that you and I may have been taught that are no longer being taught? For generations, we were taught to keep the hands at 10 and 2 on the wheel, right? Yeah. Now they advocate keeping them at 9 and 3, so more side to side. 9 and 3 feels very Fred Flintstone. <laughs> like, I don't know if I like that. Bad news, Fred. There's good reason behind the change. Steering wheels are smaller now, and the 9 and 3 method helps protect our hands if the steering wheel airbag is deployed. Other practices that have taken a back seat? Parallel parking and those terrifying accident videos. They would show you some accident scenes and often use real footage. They were trying to scare you straight. Teaching materials got a makeover too. By the late 1960s, you start to see more representation of, of more races, more, more genders and so forth in the materials. In fact, you'll find driver aid guides with girls on the cover for the first time. Perhaps the biggest change that has affected driver's ed? The ever-changing rules and regulations. There are now things that kids have to worry about that weren't an issue even 30 years ago. Uh, like what? Carpool lanes on the freeway, for example, or bicycle lanes bicycle in the city. Lanes. Fancy new features in today's cars can also take a different kind of toll on young drivers. Isn't it true that a lot of this technology can actually make young drivers complacent? Well, there are a lot of driver assist features today, things like automated lane keeping or adaptive cruise control. That can be a dangerous thing with young drivers. So can distractions like GPS, cell phones, and texting. All this newfangled technology kind of makes me yearn for the driver's ad of yore. Or is it yesteryear? We sometimes are a little stubborn. Ah. There we go. Nice. All right. That's Bink riding shotgun, my personal Model T driver's right, ed teacher. Get rolling. Proof that with practice and a little encouragement. Now, I should avoid those people, right? That would be a good idea. OK. Maybe old dogs can learn new tricks. Get foot on the brake. Tell me the truth. Am I a Model Model T driver? Well, you're a model. Model, Navy model. Okay. Right. It's something. Yeah.